matters most to you? After you sift away all the distractions, all the possessions, all the things, what matters most to you in this one life that you have? When I've asked this question to thousands of people around the world, people tend to say things like, well, I'd like to be happier, or I'd like to live a healthy life, I'd like to get a good job, graduate, I'd like to do meaningful work. My wife and I would say that we want our kids to be happy and to make a meaningful contribution to society. Other people talk about finding inner peace and uh, finding solutions to social problems and making the environment better. So now let me ask you this. How can you reach any of those positive outcomes without using your character strengths? And the answer is, you can't. In order to achieve anything in life, to reach goals, you need to tap into your self-regulation and your perseverance strengths. In order to live healthily, you need to tap into strengths like prudence and hope. To create any kind of good, meaningful relationship, an intimate relationship, we of course need to be using strengths like kindness and love and forgiveness and social intelligence. Now, how do I know this? Because in the mid-2000s, something groundbreaking took place in the social sciences. A common language of human strengths was uncovered. This was a three-year project, a collaboration of 55 scientists who wanted to answer the question of what's best about us? What's best about human beings? What constitutes a life of flourishing? a good life, a meaningful life. And they traveled to very remote areas on the planet to try to answer this question. So they went up as far north as you can go on the globe and spoke with the Inuit people in northern Greenland. And they spoke in another remote culture or connected with the Maasai tribal people far off the tour circuit in Kenya in eastern cultures and western cultures. And what they found is incredible parallel across these cultures, across what is being said in all the world religions and the ancient philosophers dating back to Aristotle. They found a, a common language that's in all of us. And this common language includes strengths like creativity and curiosity and kindness and love and social intelligence, bravery, perseverance, zest, honesty, teamwork, leadership, appreciation of beauty and excellence, self-regulation, prudence, humility, and on and on. 24 strengths. And since then, the last decade, there have now been hundreds of studies showing that these strengths and using these strengths is connected with greater flourishing in life. It's connected with greater health, greater happiness, managing problems, depression, and so on. And I remember before this common language came about, I was working one-on-one -on -one with people with severe depression, with people with chronic anxiety, major stress conditions, and I would be taking a typical deficit-based approach with them. I'd be asking them about what's wrong, trying to really study their problem, and trying to come up with treatment to help them. And when this common language came about, with the backing of science, Suddenly, I was asking different questions. And I was starting to ask these same people, well, what's actually best about you? What are your highest strengths? How might you tap into your own curiosity, your own kindness that's very high for you? How might you use that to solve your problems? How might you tap into your strength of hope or self-regulation to become more resilient in life? or you want to create a better relationship with that person, well, how might we, we talk about how to tap into your fairness, your forgiveness, and other strengths? So it really became a game changer for me, professionally, and then also personally, applying it to myself and with my family and friends. So how might you make the most of this common language? I want to offer you 
a metaphor of four levels of light. Pilot light, to flickers of light, to a beam of light, to a full glow. So it all starts with the pilot light. And you've seen in your stove or fireplace that faint little movement of a flame, sometimes barely perceptible. We have 24 pilot lights within us, 24 capacities to bring forth good, positive qualities. We could think of these as potentialities, potentiality for so much more. And if we ignite those pilot lights, we get them going, then perhaps we reach the next level of flicker of light. And you might have noticed when you've been in conversation with someone that they're talking about something positive or something good that happened to them, and the little sides of their lips start to curl up. Or maybe they have a change in their body posture. Or maybe they have a certain giggle about them. Or maybe this universal experience of the eyes lighting up. You can literally see their eyes lighting up when they're talking about something good or positive. These are flickers, little sparks that we can notice in ourselves or in other people. It's kind of like the precursor to these character strengths that we're noticing. And with enough flickers, <clears throat> we can reach the next level, and that is the beam of light. And so this is where we're clearly expressing one character strength or more in a situation. So perhaps when you were walking down Fifth Street, you decided to buy a second cup of coffee and give it to the homeless man who's standing out in the cold on the corner. In that moment, you were shining your beam of kindness. Or perhaps your friend called you up and started to sort of jab you with some political comments, knowing to he or she would get a rise out of you. And you decided to restrain yourself, shining your beam of self-control or self-regulation, because you knew that that could cause a problem in your relationship and that the relationship is more important than an argument or politics. Probably in that moment, you were maybe expressing some internal forgiveness as well for that person, beam of forgiveness. Or maybe you relate to the tutor who is helping a student with a disability at a university. And this tutor was working with the student, and the student was really starting to struggle with the material, struggling with the learning, not knowing what to do. And so the tutor said, let's just stop for a moment, just pause. I just want to say to you that I see so much bravery in you, so much courage. You know why? Because you go to class every single day knowing you're going to be facing adversity, knowing you're going to be facing struggles, the difficult teacher that you have, classmates that might tease you or give you certain looks, and your own struggles with learning and grappling with this material. But yet you go every single day facing that adversity, facing those struggles. And I just see so much bravery and courage in you. So in that moment, that tutor is shining her beam of perspective or wisdom for that student. And in turn, the student then is being catalyzed to use her strength of perhaps more bravery or more perseverance going from day to day, more zest, and so on. And so then we can expand that beam of light using that particular strength in a situation. We can expand it to the fourth level, and that's the level of the full glow. And so this is where we're expressing many strengths across situations. So we're not just expressing love in our relationships, in our family, but we're also expressing love in the workplace by being very warm and genuine to people, by being thoughtful, by being a good listener. That's expressing love in the workplace. And we don't just express fairness and teamwork and perseverance at work. We would also express it at school and in our relationships, 
being a good relationship team, and persevering in the relationship, and so on. And so that would be reaching the full glow, expressing a wide range of these strengths across situations. So how else might you reach your full glow? There's been a really important finding in this science, and it's a, it's a finding around what's called signature strengths. Our signature strengths are actually a subset of these 24 strengths that are unique to each person. So these are the strengths of the 24 that are highest for you, that are most energizing for you, most natural for you to use. And what research is finding is that, and this is across cultures, that people that use their signature strengths in new ways each day, that's being associated in gold standard studies with higher happiness and less depression for six months. I mean, to think about that, just to use one or more of your best qualities in a little bit wider way, a little bit new of a way, a unique way. But don't just take the scientist's word for it, and don't just take my word for it. Let's take your word for it. So I want to invite you now to select one of your signature strengths, any of the 24 here, and perhaps selecting the one that you believe is most core to who you are, most central to your identity, okay? I want to invite you to really see this strength that you've chosen within you. See it clearly and appreciate it. See that it has helped you in so many ways in your life to achieve different things, to reach your goals. It's contributed in a positive way to your relationships. It's helped you to engage in day-to-day -day life. Maybe it's even helped you find deep meaning in life. See that and appreciate that. And now, imagine this. Imagine that that strength has been plucked out of you. You're not allowed to use the strength for the next month. How would that feel? What would that be like to not use that strength for the next month? So if you chose curiosity, you can't pursue anything new. You can't pursue novelty. You can't do anything new. You can't ask any new questions. You can't explore anything on the internet. You can't eat any new foods. You can't go to any new places, any new restaurants for the next month. If you chose judgment and critical thinking, you can't be logical. You can't be fact-based. You can't be thinking-oriented. You can't be reasonable with people. You can't look at many ways to solve problems. You can't look at many details of a situation for the next month. If you chose love, you can't be warm and genuine in your relationships. You can't be thoughtful to people. You can't value close relationships. You certainly can't even hug or kiss anybody for the next month. What would that feel like? What would that be like for any of the strengths that you chose? And so how people usually respond to that in a word or a phrase is they say, I would feel empty inside. I would feel <coughs> hollow. I would feel depressed. I would feel devastated. People say, I feel viscerally anxious and upset. I felt like I was not me. I felt like I was just twiddling my thumbs in life. I felt hopeless and helpless. I felt as if I was suffocating, like I could barely breathe because my best quality was taken from me. That's how important your signature strengths are unique to each person on the planet. So perhaps you're ready to take action. Take a look at this picture here. This picture is an illustration by Kim Jai Hung. And what do you see? I'm sure you could say I see mountain landscape, and I see some trees in the background, the pond is there, looks like a dark day, that kind of thing, right? Now, take your left ear and place it on your left shoulder and tilt your head 
like this. And now what do you see? So perhaps now you see the figures emerging from the picture. The far left side in the middle, taking up the whole picture up toward the sky and toward the water. There's always more to the picture. There's always more going on beyond the surface in every conversation, everything that we do with anybody. And in order to, certainly in order to see strengths, in order to see virtues in people, in order to do something different, we have to take action with the strengths. We have to learn to tilt our head, doing something different. And you might remember this, that who you are is what you repeatedly do. So who you are in this world is what you repeatedly do. So do character strengths. Be your best character strengths. How might you do that? Well, you might take action by first learning what your highest strengths are and expressing them more in your life. You might take time to savor and appreciate those strengths. You might turn to the person next to you or to your loved one or your child or your boyfriend, girlfriend, your spouse and talk to them about the strengths that you see in them, that you see fairness and kindness and forgiveness in them. Spot those strengths in action. You might go a step further and see the strengths of your enemies, see the strengths of people that disagree with you and express the strengths widely. Reflect on how you use them, discuss them with other people, and bring them about every single day. Keep them top of your mind. Cue you, cue yourself to remember to use your strengths. And imagine if you did that. Imagine if I did that. We would be creating this positive contagion, a ripple effect back and forth that would spread to our families, to our work environments, to our classrooms, to our neighborhoods, to our cities, and beyond. So we can rediscover our 24 pilot lives. We can see those sparks, those flickers of light in people. We can reinforce people in our life for showing their beam of light. And you can express your own beam of light by tapping into this common universal language that bonds all human beings. So you can rediscover your full glow. And it all starts by you and me tilting our heads. Thank you.